In this tutorial, we'll look at generating a delay of 50 milliseconds, 50 milliseconds with help of timer zero, and then we'll use this delay in order to blink LEDs connected to port three. So, so basically, uh, we recall from the last video that that the uh, that the that the timer frequency in fact would be a crystal frequency divided by 12 so assuming we have 11.0592 megahertz divided by 12 so this comes up to 921.6 kilohertz this is the frequency that the timer gets now the timer tick each timer tick this is equals to 1 divided by this frequency so the every time the counter takes it you know it takes a time of 1.085 microseconds now in order to generate the delay of 50 milliseconds what we need to do is so each tick takes and these this much of time so we need to know how much how many ticks are required to generate a delay of 50 milliseconds so that basically would be 50 milliseconds divided by 1.085 micro so this would this would be tick numbers so this would be number of ticks that would be required to generate the delay now before you go ahead and calculate that i would like to tell you what we usually do is so if we remember the resistor tcon so we had uh, a bit to run the timer which is tr0 and we also had a bit tf0 so this indicates when the timer would overflow now instead of putting this particular tick value in the number of ticks uh, that we get what we do is we subtract this from the highest count so the highest count in hex would be f f f and if we subtract this count we would get a value which is loaded into th0 and tl0 now what that would do is the timer would start from this particular count and it would go to FFFF and then it would overflow. In the meantime, it would have generated a delay of 50 milliseconds. Now let us do that calculation and check. Now the 11.0592 megahertz would be this 60, so this would be 11.0592 megahertz. Um, this divided by 12 this is uh, 921.6 kilohertz this is our timer frequency now if i store this one divided by this would be 1.085 microseconds so this is our this is our this, every counter tick would take 1.085 microseconds now we need to find how many ticks we require so this this would be 50 milliseconds divided just print the app so let me store this now 50 milliseconds to minus three okay so this would be point not five yes this would point not five this divided by one point zero eight five microseconds so these are the number of counts that we need. So this is 46,080. So this is 46,080. Now this is in in uh, decimal. We need to convert this into hex. So let me store that. And if I change the mode, if I do it in programmer mode, and if I recall the value. So this is in decimal, in hex it would be B400, this would be B400. Now this, the highest frequency, so the highest frequency is FFF minus 
b for zero zero this would be four b f f so this is b four zero zero now this four b it needs to be loaded in th and ff needs to be loaded in tl now what this would do is it would start the timer at this value and it would go to ff ff and it would overflow by the time it overflows it would have generated a delay of 50 milliseconds now this is pretty simple so let us go ahead and uh, look at the exact code now as you could see there are two functions here one is the main function and the, one, the other function which generates the delay now since we are writing the function in the same file we have defined a function prototype here so the function is called delay uh, underscore t0 which uh, basically means delay with timer 0 uh, what we do is we put the timer in mode mode 1 which is 16 bit timer so if you could recall so this should be gate c slash t m1 m0 and uh, the other higher uh, i mean this is uh, this will be the lower nibble so uh, for this would be for timer 0 for timer 1 there would be similar 4 bits which are not using so assuming those to be 0 and we are using it in mode 1 so for mode 1 this would be 0 and 1 so basically if the other 4 bits are 0 that would make it 0x01 zero zero and as we have calculated before th0 should be 4b and this should be ff so this should be 4b ff so, so we load the counter here or load the timer here and then to turn it on we know that tr0 if you make it 1 this turns on the timer now uh, we need to spend time till it overflows so we wait here with a while statement while this uh, overflow flag becomes uh, zero it waits here whenever it overflows we get out of the program and this is pretty important now if you do not clear the overflow flag what happens is say for instance it will turn on all the uh, LEDs connected to port 3 then if we call the function first time it would overflow and if we do not uh, you know clear the timer flag what happens is for the next time when it is called it comes here and it does not wait till 50 milliseconds have passed so what it does is it simply since we are not clear it was one it would go ahead and you know come back so you would not see the LED turning off if this is missed now so we clear the uh, overflow flag we clear the run control bit and this is the function so in the main program it's pretty simple we since the LEDs are connected to port 3 we uh, send 0 0 to make it as output then we then what we do is we uh, send all ones to port 3 then we call delay of 50 milliseconds we turn the LEDs off and then we call a delay of 50 milliseconds again so this will generate a led blinking effect now 50 milliseconds is a i mean is a is perceivable by eye you can usually see 50 milliseconds by eye now what you could play around is you decrease this to uh, 30 20 10 and just check as to what point this the blinking of led you do not see blinking of led you see stable ones and, and that would be your uh, your persistence so uh, below that your eye would not you know be below say about 10 milliseconds the eye would not perceive difference between one and a zero so they are pretty interesting examples to do with timers and we would also do uh, uh, persistence of vision uh, with just eight leds and the timer on 805 and you could create messages thank you for watching see you next time